Called Love. In this video we're looking at all the rhythm sections and also Dan's solo which is the second solo in the song. And let's not forget that is the solo that in the video he plays in front of the biggest set of Marshall stacks that the world has ever seen. I'm going to teach both of the Justin Hawkins solos, solo one and three, in uh, a separate video. I'll link to that in the description below. Tab is also available in the description and we're giving you little tidbits of help as we go through. We need skills such as power chords, confident riff playing, and being able to play along to the original recording to make the most of this song because that's what you want to be doing. Jam along to the guys as soon as possible. Here's how to play this amazing song. So the song and this riff is in the key of E major, but the first chord is an F sharp a power chord. We then have an A power chord and a B power chord. Finally, an E power chord. Every time I'm playing a power chord, I'm playing the root, the fifth, and the octave, which tends to be a brighter sounding power chord than this. I think that's how the guys play it, but they, they play it so many different ways depending on whether they're playing it live or in various different videos. So you choose your preference of a power chord with just two fingers on two strings or three. I'm going to always play the three. F sharp power chord, A, A, so A twice, B, B. F sharp, A, A, B, B. B, B, E, E, B, B, A, A. And then we have a single notes part there. The single chords that we need to play to be able to play this riff, all basically keeping throughout your first finger at the second fret, third and little finger at the fourth fret throughout. Justin has commented previously that he says this riff just flew off his fingers, you know, just from keeping his first finger at the second fret and the third and fourth fingers at this fret, just doing this kind of thing. So really important point to do that yourself when you're playing this riff. Okay, important point for the mutes. Mute after that first note. Mute of this end. After that A chord, we have this set of notes. Fourth fret on string six, open to four on string five, then the open string six. At all times, keep your fingers and hand kind of still. So we're always going to remain in this position. That's the one to give some vibrato if you want to play it like Justin does. Maybe with some uh, little bit of stink on it. But Dan plays everything pretty flat. And I've got my sound. I'm playing this guitar because it's a bit more Dan Hawkins. From my experience teaching, I know some people are going to struggle going from uh, this F sharp chord and the B to 
chords and notes where we need that thumb a little bit higher. Be aware we do need to move this thumb. F sharp. For both the F sharp and the B chord, we've got the thumb directly in the middle of the back of the neck. So we're going from this to this to this, kind of a lot in this riff. Importantly, as soon as we hit that last A chord before the last part, get your thumb over, in my opinion, that's what I would encourage. going from the F sharp to A is a good thing to practice. Second section is the bridge. Fantastic bridge. He says, Justin said this is inspired by ABBA. I don't particularly know which song, but he said it was inspired by ABBA. Dan plays it like this. Well, actually, Dan plays it like this, which is a very... I've never seen anyone else play this chord like this. I'll show a quick clip of a video I took of Dan Hawkins at NAMM in 2019 now. So he plays an F sharp minor chord with the thinnest two strings ringing out. I would play like, like this and most people would play it like this. This I think comes more from Dan starting his musicianship as a bass player and then moving to guitar, so it's probably something that comes from that. But either way there's always personal preferences and what I'd be playing is whichever way we do it. So, palm muting but keeping the thinner strings ringing out is a nice thing to do. Before we go to the A, A sharp and B, I, I've always heard that on the recording and I think that's what they do live from memory. So A, A sharp power chord and then B. Just basically moving this up one fret at a time. I've seen many people teach and play this just as standard power chords. Both on the recording when, and when I've seen Dan in particular play this live. It's got that sound to it. slide down. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Whole bridge. I have seen these tabs and talked about as, um, death chords, so having the uh, string six ring out. I don't particularly like the sound of those, but it probably is there on the original recording. Um, that might be how the guy sometimes played it live, but I haven't seen him do that often. Here is the chorus to this amazing song. So that is a slide down from about 12th fret. Learn the single notes first if you're totally new at this. So like the bass line to this, not playing the power chords. It's all first finger at second fret, third finger at fourth fret, just like the original riff, but walking up a major scale. Fourth 
third finger down, open, second fret, and then walking up the E major scale again. And then all we do is we, when we play the A note, we play the A power chord, F sharp power chord, and the B power chord. Again, that thumb's got to be pretty dexterous around the back of the neck. And then C sharp power chord. That is C sharp, second fret, B power chord, back to C sharp, to D. Recap of all those sections, because those are the three parts to this song from a rhythm point of view, but the connections between each of them are really important to get so you can play along to the original recording, which I highly advise you do. It's, it's so much fun. And then imagine this is the last one of the verse. The rundown. The other thing I'm going to show in this video is Dan Hawkins' solo, which is solo number two in this song. Solo one and three are played by Justin. They're uh, going to be in a separate tutorial to this. I'll link to it down in the description below. Here's Dan Hawkins' solo in this one, which is of course played with the wall of marshals behind him in, in the music video. Super cool. So starting off with the E note at the 5th fret, plus the open E. So play that with your first finger, but keep it right on the tip. So they ring out. Uh, then Dan plays this with the middle finger. And then a the little finger here, one ringing out to the other. Because he uses his middle finger more for those sorts of bends. I prefer to use my third finger. That's how I choose to play it. Of course, all these notes walking down just an E major scale and then up. These first notes. That's just major pentatonic, so. That's the first phase out of four. Uh, very melodic. Second section is very melodic, also major pentatonic. Then a repetition of. So the only new bit really. That's fourth to sixth fret with a hammer on. And then the repetition off. Nothing should give you any trouble there if you've got this far in the video and you can play all of that 
Here's the faster section, and here's how Dan played it when I saw him play this live in 2019 at NAMM in California. So that begins with a bend at the 12th fret on the 3rd string and it's the 10th fret on the B string. So strings 2 and 3. Whole step bend. Whole step bend again, 1 fret lower. And then everything here is E major pentatonic again. And then we have a flick off combo here, which this is how more how he plays it on the recording than he did in that video, but I just wanted to show both. So that's what he plays on the recording, in my opinion. That's 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 what I'm hearing. And then from there. So that's pick, hammer, flick in E major pentatonic. Pick, hammer, flick off, pick, hammer, flick off. Then just on the third string. Couple of double stops. Finishing. Now that is a very very well used move, uh, lots of the 90s rock stuff like Oasis use this, cigarettes and alcohol. And that's the whole solo, that is what he plays in front of the Marshall Stacks. That whole second half of the solo. Is all sections of I Believe in a Thing Called Love, apart from solo one and three, which are in this video that I'll link to just here as soon as it's uploaded. You'll find more help with power chords and rock guitar at andyguitar.co.uk. I wish you all the best with learning this amazing song.